Uh, good day ladies and gentlemen once again. Uh, this is another recording on bills of exchange and this will be introduction then after I will use the example which is example 2.1 as introduction for me to introduce to you to the topic called bills of exchange. Uh, it says in commerce extensive use is made of bills of exchange by means of which payment for purchased goods is made after the date on which the transaction took place and you can say there it should be e and it further says bills are promissory notes and can be negotiable so a bill is when uh, you purchase goods and services, but uh, the payment takes place after uh, the purchase of goods and services has uh, been purchased or has taken place. So now that means this is more like an account if we speak of uh, the very popular language. So now you buy this inventory on account uh, which we use the paper called a bill of exchange and you sign the bill and you promise to make a payment on a specified date uh, now we are provided uh, with the scenario and this is again not very far away from what we call um, a post dated check because a post dated check is when somebody takes something on credit and promise to make a payment on a specified date uh, which will be normally signed on the check and say this check must be withdrawn on such and such a date so it is very close uh, to a post dated check either received or post dated check uh, issued and you'll see those commonalities as we progress uh, with our example i will uh, unpack the topic very much uh, with the use of the example because there's not much theory to explain it before doing the example now there's a note that I want to bring to your attention when it comes to bill. It says if uh, 3MD appears on a bill, take note if 3MD appear on a bill, it means the bill is due three months after the date it was drawn. That means the due date of the bill will be three months. So the 3MD is means the uh, the bill is due three months from the date it was drawn and this is very important and uh, another one will be a specified number of days where they will say the bill is due 90 days or 60 days but when it's 3md is three months after the date the bill uh, was drawn now we are provided or our attention is drawn to example 2.1 in explaining uh, the topic of bills as I said that I'll be using the example to explain uh, and unpack bills it says on the 1st uh, of May B. Bamen sold goods or sold good to V. Vodka for 2500 he draw a bill on vodka for 2500 U3 MD that means the due date of this bill is three months from the date the bill was drawn so now when you say three months if it's 3md we count the same date three months down the line therefore now that will be the due date of the bill that means if we have may um it it, it will be june july and august so that means this bill is due on the first of august in the same year that will be three months so when it's 3md we count the same date the bill was drawn then three months down the line of the same date of the drawn date of the bill that becomes the due date of the bill in other words that means uh, the creditor b barman can only receive money on the first of august remember V. Vodka is the one who bought goods and services or bought goods from uh, Bamen. So if that is the case, that means uh, Bamen does not have cash for the sale of goods and services that he sold to V. Vodka. But he only has the paper which is a promise uh, to receive the money from V. Vodka 
on the 1st of August of the same year. So now that means B. Bamend can only receive uh, the money for the goods that uh, were sold uh, only on the 1st uh, of August, as it is uh, clearly specified. So now, and also there, there should be goods uh, because uh, it's sold goods. Then uh, it further says uh, that which um, V. Vodka accepted it on the 3rd uh, of May. The acceptance date is uh, not to be taken into account. We no longer uh, take into account the acceptance date. We only take into account uh, the approved date of the bill, uh, the date in which the bill was drawn, which is the 1st. Then it says uh, the amount of 2.5 is the face value of the bill. So now this is the face value of the bill, which is the amount V Vodka owes to uh, Bamen. So that is called the face value of the bill. The 1st of May is the date drawn, meaning the date the bill was drawn. So now we start calculating, we, ca we calculate from the date the bill was drawn then that becomes three months down the line the first of august which is three months after the first of may is the date uh, when the amount is due and hence it is called the due date or the maturity date of the bill that means as i mentioned to you that uh, b barman uh, can only receive money uh, three months down the line which is the first of august currently he is only holding the paper which is a bill that has been signed and approved. And the value of the v of the bill or the value of this paper is 2,500 of the goods and save of the goods that were sold to uh, V Vodka. So now let us continue further and try to unpack. Please take note of the fact that we now are introduced to what to call uh, the face value of the bill. And take note, when we deal with the future value, this is not the future value when we do compound interest and annuities. This is the face value, and the face value is F dot V in terms of the abbreviation. So it's the face value of the bill. Then after it continues by saying there is a note that we also need to take into account that uh, has some important information that I've explained already above. The creditor. Uh, Bamen can wait until uh, August 1st to be paid his money or he can take the bill to his bank or broker and sell or discount the bill before the due date. That means if um, B. Bamen, the one who sold goods and services, uh, cannot wait until the 1st of August, he can go to the bank and say, Bank, can I please give you uh, this paper called a bill of exchange so that you can give me cash before time because I am in need of money now I can't wait up until the 1st of August so now you can go to the bank and say bank can you please give me money it depends to the now it can be any number of days before the uh, due date of the bill so whatever date that B. Bamen wants to go and withdraw money from the bank he can do so then the bank will charge him interest uh, which I'll introduce you to that, which is called the banker's discount. That what is important, the fact that uh, B. Banman does not have to wait until the 1st of August. He can go and withdraw this money before the 1st of August. And that is called <coughs> discounting the bill. So he can go and discount the bill with the bank. Then... Uh, it continues uh, by saying that the bank or the broker will pay out the cash value of the bill. That means the amount that B. Bamen will receive is what you call the cash value of the bill. And the cash value of the bill is the face value of the bill, which is uh, the 2.5 that we know, uh, uh, less the interest charged by the bank. Remember, when the bank is giving money to B. Bamen before the 1st of August, the bank will charge interest. And that interest is the one that we'll be talking about soon called the banker's discount. But very important to know the fact that uh, the cash value equals the face value of the bill less the interest charged by the bank. 
and the interest charged by the bank is called the banker's discount which is bd so i will uh, be explaining that very soon it says the interest charge is known as the banker's discount which is bd so now the bank will say because i have to wait for some number of days before the first of august so i need to charge you interest for the period i will be waiting up until the first of august and it says um the banker's discount which is uh, denoted as bd it says bd is quadu the face value of the bill turns by the discount rate turns by the unexpired period now it says banker's discount equals face value times by interest times by t then the face value is uh, the banker's discount is called the face value times by i times by t therefore now we need to unpack a little bit what does um, t mean and what is i mean and we definitely know that uh, i means the rate although we, we we use i i normally use i but i is denoted as r in this case which is the rate but is the interest times this by t times by t so r is the interest rate t is the unexpired period t is the unexpired period and i will explain further what does unexpired period mean unexpired period mean is the period between the discount date and the due date of the bill and this is very important to master when it comes to bill because you are very likely that in almost every question you will be required to calculate the unexpired period <laughs> then it says uh, the period between the first of may the period between the 1st of May, which is the drawn date of the bill, and the 1st of August, which is the due date, is known as the tenor of the bill, <clears throat> where the period between the date of the bill was discounted and the due date is known as the unexpired period. This is very important. This is uh, how we calculate our unexpired period. It is the period between the date in which the bill was discounted. That means the date B Barman decides to say, I need money now. I can't wait up until the 1st of August. Then he goes to the bank and say, bank, I have this paper that is worth 2.5. And we will. I will only receive money from this paper on the 1st of August. But I can't wait for the 1st of August. Can you please give me the money? So now the bank will say, okay, you came 30 days before the 1st of August or 28 days before the 1st of August. So now that will mean the bank will say, I have to charge you interest for the number of days I will be holding this paper before the 1st of August. So now hence the calculation of the banker's discount, which is the interest charged by the bank. The interest charged by the bank called banker's discount is equal to face value times by the rate, which is the interest rate times by T, which is the period between the discount date of the bill and the uh, the um, the discount date of the bill and the due date of the bill. Uh, so let us uh, proceed on that same note. Uh, then it says calculate the face value if Barman discount uh, this bill on the first of May. We are now to calculate the face uh, the the face value. Oh, sorry, the cash value of the bill. This should be the cash value, not the face value. We calculate the cash value of the bill if a uh, B barman uh, discounted the bill on the 5th of May at 5%. In other words, we went to the bank and said, we can't wait until the 1st of August, but we need money on the 5th of May. So now we need to calculate how many days were left before the due date of the bill. From the date the bill was discounted up until the date the bill uh, was due. Then that becomes our unexpired period which is called T. So now let us uh, do calculate that 
we know that the due date of the bill, the date is the bill is due first of August. So now if it's due first of August, we need to calculate from May and say for May how many days were left. It was uh, discounted on the uh, 5th of May. Then we need to know how many days do we have in the month of May, January, February, March, April, May. May has 31 days. So now we need to say 31 minus 5. <clears throat> 31 days in May minus 5. It gives us 26 days. That means the month of May we have 26 days that were unexpired. The month of June, we know that June has 30 days for the whole year. And we know that July has 31 days. Then we know that August is only one day because the bill was due on the 1st of August. So now we need to calculate and say uh, 26, 30, 31 plus 1. 26, 30, 31 plus 31 plus 1. It gives us <clears throat> 88 days. That means... The bill was due 88 days. It was uh, due in 88 days. That means there were uh, 88 days that were left before the bill was due in simple terms. So now we are required to calculate the cash value of the bill, <clears throat> not the face value of the bill. Then now we say, okay, we have calculated our unexpired period. And we know that uh, the cash value of the bill is equal to face value of the bill minus the banker's discount. We know that the cash value of the bill is equal to face value of the bill um, less the banker's face value of the bill less the interest charged by the bank. And we know that the interest charged by the bank is called the banker's discount. And to calculate banker's discount, we say face value times by the discount rate which is r times by the unexpired period so we first need to know the interest that will be charged by the bank for the number of days that are left before the bill is due because we know the face value of the bill is <clears throat> 2500 rands it is given unto us so let us start uh, first by calculating um, the banker's discount our banker's discount is equal to the face value of 2500 times by the rate of 0 0.05 because it was discounted at 5% per annum times by 88 days over 365 days in a year. <clears throat> then now let us look at our banker's discount. How much uh, interest will the bank charge? Uh, this will be divided by 365 times by 2.5 times by 0 0.05 and this will give us 30 rand uh, 14 cents it gives us 13 rand 14 cents so now this will be our banker's discount banker's discount being the interest that will be charged by the bank so that uh, the person which is B man we will draw money that is less than <clears throat> uh, what he had because it could not wait up until the 1st of August. So now as you can com calculate completely 2.5 times by 0 0.05 times by 88 over 365, uh, we get to the same 30 rand uh, 14 cents. So now in other words, the bank will say B Bamen because we are going to keep this paper for 88 days without having money. So we can't give you the entire 2.5. We'll only give you the difference between the interest that we are charging you for the 88 days. Then we say minus from the face value of the bill. So now meaning the cash value of the bill is equal to the face value which is 2,500 minus the banker's discount being the interest of 30 rand. Uh, 14 cents then this will give us uh, minus 2500 this will give us 2469 rand 86 cents so now this is the cash 
uh, that will be received by B. Banman on the 5th of uh, May in the current year. Then now remember the bank <clears throat> will wait up until the 1st of August, which is the due date of the bill. Then the bank will wait and wait when the 1st of August comes, then the bank will receive the entire 2500 which is the full face value of the bill. But B. Banman will only receive an amount uh, an amount of uh, 2,469.86 uh, for the fact that the bank will charge him interest of 30 rand 14 cents. So now that is how you calculate uh, the face value and also that is how you calculate T. <clears throat> Remember T is the unexpired period. Interest can also be calculated and also face value can also be required to be calculated. So please make sure that you are able to calculate <clears throat> all these um, uh, possible unknowns. Let me just show you what do I mean that this can be required. <clears throat> we have our bankers discount which is equal to face value times by the rate times by T. So now if we are looking for the time which is the unexpired period, remember T remains the unexpired period. If we are looking for T, we know the bankers discount, we know the face value, we know the rate that of the interest the bank will charge. Then we'll need to put a, a T as the subject of the formula. Then we divide by face uh, value times by R. This will cancel this. Whatever we do on the right hand side, we do it on the left hand side. Then we say face value times by <coughs> the rate. That means T will be equal to bankers discount divided by face value times by the rate. So now you just uh, make any unknown that you're looking for to be the subject of the formula, meaning T is equal to bankers discount divided by uh, face value times by <coughs> the rate. Then obviously we'll need to divide by, um, or sorry, to multiply by 365 days in a year in order for us to get to the number of days that were unexpired. And again, if we are looking for the rate, then the rate, it will say rate is equal to bankers discount divided by face value times by T, which is our unexpired period. Because this is the rate, then we need to multiply by 100 to get it to the full whole percentage. Then again, if we're looking for the face value, it will be face value equals bankers discount divided by I times, or sorry, R times by T. I like to say I because I'm used with the simple interest where our rate is equal to I. Rate times by T. <clears throat> now remember very likely that your T will be whatever number of days divided by number of days in a year. So please don't forget that. So please make sure that you master these formulas and they are very similar to the formula that we dealt with in simple interest. So please have them at the back of your mind as as, as mastermind. So now master them because we'll be using them very regularly and I will not be coming back and explaining them to you again. Now uh, the next part is uh, example 2.2. And I will be now uh, going in details to example 2.2 where we have a merchant in this case who, who, who held two bills. So now we will be dealing with the case of the merchant who held two bills and, and how he dealt with these two bills. Thank you very much.